We are live at Studio B. This is your day-to-day -day BYU Sports play-by-play. -play. I'm Spencer Linton alongside Jerem Jordan. And yes, spring football begins today, but we're going back to basketball. And doing so on the heels of one of the greatest wins in BYU basketball history, the Cougars knocking off number seven, Kansas. A man that. who knows a thing or two about winning a big game is Eric Mika, who knocked off number one on the road and ended Gonzaga's perfect season. Eric, welcome back to the show. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Always a pleasure. It's been a while. I, I'm always concerned you guys aren't going to call me back, but here we are. <laughs> you've, you've done enough to earn your way back onto the show, Eric. Uh, you've learned how easy awesome. it is to do Thank our you. job, right? You were an analyst on uh, a G League game the other day. Yeah, you know, Ben and I were talking um, before I hopped on the show, and, and he made a great point. He said, you just saw that Spencer and Jerem could do it, and you figured you could do it. And that honestly was my exact line of thinking. <laughs> I'm like, this cannot be that hard. It's it's not. It's uh, so easy. It's, oh, my it's gosh. So easy. Well, thanks it for coming is. on, Actually, Eric. It was good to see you. It, 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 no, it is hard. It is hard. You have to be so, like, efficient and precise and concise with your words. And so I was exhausted. I also told Ben this, like, after the game, I like laid on the couch for a couple hours because <laughs> I, I felt more tired than after I played sometimes. So maybe that speaks That's to, to some issues uh, of effort I have on the court. But yeah, I was exhausted. Uh, after post games, I'm always like, Spence, wrap up the interviews. I got to get to Chipotle. I got to get my chips and queso. And I got to just chill and like watch a TV show and decompress. And sometimes yeah. I make that. Spence, sometimes I don't. I would like to get my chips and queso. But there's really good content in the post game that you get to, great interviews and whatnot. But, yeah, it takes a sec. Okay, let's talk about BYU's win at Kansas, bro. Are you kidding me? How did BYU pull this off Crazy. in a game that Spencer went to? I mean, I, I just think Pope Pope is the coach of the year, man. Like, he, he just – he knows how to get it done. You know, you think to all the success he's had, wherever he's been, you know, he did this. He overachieved at UVU, you know, a couple of years ago when, when COVID shut the team down. I mean, they were, they were poised to do – some really amazing things in the NCAA tournament. They were built really, really well. And, and I don't know. I, I'm just a huge fan of Pope. I'm a huge fan of the way these guys are playing right now, the confidence they're playing with. And like we talked about, uh, I think at the beginning of the of the Big 12, when they picked up their first win, they have momentum right now. And momentum in, in February, March is, is everything. Eric, I think a lot of fans are wondering, how does a BYU team that lost to – Oklahoma State and Kansas State recently when they were favorites go on the road and beat number seven Kansas when they were a clear underdog. What what would you say to those fans and how would you explain how that happens with this team? Yeah, I mean, I'm not I'm not in the locker room, so obviously I don't know the, the intricacies of, of how things are working in there, but from the outside looking in, it, it's a mindset. It means that these guys mentally are very strong and very equipped with what it takes to, to go deep uh, in the NCAA tournament and, and what it takes to, to, you know, have a long season. Right. Um, so whatever they're doing in the locker room, whatever they're doing, I think supplementary to, to, to the on court preparation, you know, mentally they're, they're locked in and they have some real fortitude that they showed because two games that they lost that, you know, happen right no one no one's going to hold it against them it's a tough league they're teams that have that have shown um you know moments of of being good teams as well it's not like you know kansas take it's not like they're coached by some nobody like they're they're a good team and and they have good players that were highly touted when they came out of high school so you know i think i think it's a it's a mentality and i think it shows that they've got some real mental toughness and some real real mental giants in their locker room that they're able to just brush that one off let it roll off their back and and on to the next one and frankly, the, there was more good from the Kansas win than there was, like, bad from the losses, if that makes sense. Like, it right. was worth it right. to win that game if the cost was that you lose, uh, lost both those games. Now, ideally, you just don't lose those games and you get the Kansas win. But yeah. it's, uh, BYU, BYU isn't, like, a top five team in the country right now. They're top 20, I think. But let's go. Okay, people have been asking and wondering where this – win ranks in BYU history among the great road wins. Put out a poll on uh, uh, the night after uh, the win, right? And number one, Gonzaga, 2017, won with 55% against Kansas, against San Diego State, 2011. And then I put in number two, UCLA, in 1981. That was right after Danny Ainge uh, had graduated into the next season. It still won. 
Is it still the, the fans think it's Woo. the best? Do you feel like it is the best road win in BYU history? Listen, I I, I do. It, it's like a two part answer. Yes and no. It's kind of like a well, yes slash tie. Yes, because I think you know we spoiled Gonzaga. Gonzaga's perfect season. You know they're they're twenty nine and zero. They had newspapers printed. I just talked about this on my podcast. You know they had, I, I I even found the pod the the newspaper that said thirty and zero. You know history has been made, and you know so we had all that. It was their senior night at their place. Um, I don't know what what uh, we were expected to lose by, but we were definitely you know expected to lose we were down 20 to start so i i don't know i think it's the greatest single game but i've told people this before there's a reason they chanted nit at us after the game the student <laughs> section they were you know they were salty they were <laughs> they were they were mad but they were right you know that we went to the nit so the implications you know for the season in general weren't nearly as big as this win last night not that you know our guys weren't going to the dance uh, if they didn't get this win against Kansas. But I think this locks them in at a really, really good spot and, and shows that we're a dangerous team. So that's why I say it's a, it's a tie because it's a huge win. You know, the first time ever going, that's a historic uh, arena. Everyone talks about the atmosphere being, you know, maybe the best in college basketball. And we go in and steal the first one. I mean, that, that's pretty cool. So it's a, it's a yes slash tie. Eric, the national impact was felt with BYU's stunner, shocker, whatever word you want to use at Fog Allen Fieldhouse. And Joe Lunardi just bumped BYU from a seven seed back up onto the five seed line after that one victory. Again, a major victory, but jumps BYU two full seed lines. So the Cougars now a projected five seed. Is that fair based on the body of work? Or do you feel like BYU still has some work to do to secure and feel good about being a five seed? I, I mean, I think that's fair. I, I don't see them. You guys were talking about this before I came on. I don't see them slipping um, really either way, unless some crazy things happen. But this is a crazy league. This is a, you know, a crazy time of year. Tomorrow is March. They call it March Madness for a reason. Like, you really don't know. And and so, like I said, I, I, I'm very confident in our guys after getting a, a win like this, after a couple of letdown losses. Um that they're gonna they're gonna come out swinging. They're they're not thinking about oh what if we slip. They're thinking oh what if we move up one. What if we go get a four seed. What if we go win the Big Twelve tournament. Like it, it it's really anybody's conference as we've seen. You know. And the other thing to consider is what if we do what we're expected to do, supposed to do, maybe overachieve a little bit in these last couple games. And what if other teams don't. You know. Like what if it. Uh, I don't I don't know everyone's schedule obviously, but what if a Kansas State does what they do to do against us and they beat a Kansas, you know what I mean? Or, or they beat Iowa state or we go and, and beat Iowa state again. Um, you know, I, I like that matchup after watching this the first time. So you really just don't know. And, and I'm sure that that is that the message is let's just keep being us, keep staying locked in and let's go climb higher. You know, they're not worried about slipping. It's, it's at least a five seed. Eric Mika with us on BYU Sports Nation. We appreciate the time to catch up. And for your fair commentary on both games. You know, you're not one of those guys just like, oh, clearly it was what we did. Who cares what those guys? No, you, you, I thought you were fair to the situation. That's props to you, man. You're learning, right? You've, you've been through this. And now. IT. Yeah. And I, <laughs> I, I, I was about to say, I, I, I'm not an idiot. I know how Twitter works, so I can't just give... I can't just give a one-off, you know, a one-sided answer. Uh, I'm going to keep it, you know, a little bit both sides. I love it. Hey, I know people want to hear from you, and you got a great thing going with the new podcast. How can they find it? Where do they find it? Yeah, you find it wherever you find your, your podcasts. Um, most people are on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. Um, we're also on Instagram at Now for Later Pod. Um, the podcast is called Now for Later. Um, you type that in, you're going to find it. It's been, it's been a lot of fun. We had Alicia Clark, um, three-time WNBA champion. She's currently playing with the Las Vegas Aces. Uh, she came by and her episode dropped uh, two days ago. And it, it, I mean, it's awesome. If you're a sports fan, you got to listen. I like sports. Yes, yes, yeah. I do. I, I, I'll add my name to that conversation. I hope. I hope. <laughs> 
All right, he is uh, NBA G League color analyst, whatever you want to call it now, color commentator, uh, Eric Mika with us on BYU Sports Nation. Also a pretty good guy. Happy Leap Year Day, by the way, too. Thank you. Thank right, you. It's, uh, it's a big, it's deal a in big your day in our house. So yeah, I know. I appreciate that. <laughs> yep. yeah. Good to yep. talk to you, brother. We'll talk to you soon. See you, brother.